Hey, this is Legendary Beats here, and I'd like to welcome you to the 7 Steps to a Legendary Mix series. This series has been brought to you by LegendaryBeatsOnline.com. Today we're going to be learning about naming sounds in FL Studio 11. As you can see, we're using FL Studio. If you're using any other DAW, the same concept applies. The reason why you would name your sounds is so that you would have an organized, you know, you know exactly what you're using. Uh, most sounds that you use, especially if you're using Nexus or any plugins, uh, the names are just the name of the lead uh, or the whatever VST sound that you're using. It usually has some weird name. So in order for you to recognize what's being played at that time, uh, you give it a name that you can recognize and that especially when you export those files out, someone else can recognize. So this is how we go about doing that. So here I already started naming some of the files. What I like to do is I like to name the kicks, snares, and claps. Just name them as they are. And what I do is I put them on pattern. And then just have them play. And then on the numpad, I would just hit the plus key and go to the next sound. This was a, this was a snare high. And if you're not sure of the sound, you can always open up the VST that you were using, the plugin, and just check it out real quick, see if it's a lead. So here it says that it's a LD, means lead. So I'll put that there. Lead. And that's basically it. Uh, so each one of these videos, I'm going to go through each step of how I go about um, mixing my beats and how I organize it. Because if you start off right, it helps you know have a better product at the end or at least you're more focused and you could go through your workflow is better so so far so actually i'll name this lead to and this was a sequence <laughs> supposed to be coloring uh, that's for the next video no oh, what am I doing what am I doing these are all pretty much leads as you can see I'm using Nexus I think it's next yeah Nexus 2 it's a habit I keep checking to change the color <laughs> but that's for another video Uh, since the lead is already, you know, I would like to keep them all together for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Uh, you can move up these sounds, you can move their position um, by selecting Alt and Up or Down or whatever. So when you hold down Alt and you press Up or Down, it moves it up. So I want it to be, you know, with the other leads. So I'll add it up. Uh, I'll push it up and then just go through it again. That's a gate. Gate. And that was a herp. And this, I don't believe, has anything. Now, um, one other thing I like to show you is that here, uh, as you can see on this playlist view, 
it has the sounds here, but these sounds are the original, these names are the original names of the original sound. So in order to change these, what you would do is you go to uh, each track in the step sequencer, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to go up here, you could hit F2 if you'd like, it makes it easier, and then you click rename, and this is supposed to be kick, kick, and then you hit enter, and it changes it instantly on the playlist view. So we're going to go through all of these, oh, and you just have to make sure you hit that plus button. Clap. And as I'm doing it, you can see the changes live here. Um, snare high, snare high, and as you can see, that's changing. Oh, no, what am I doing? hit that plus button so this is what you want to again you could click this go to rename or hit f2 like what i'm doing rename hi and i'll show you how to change the colors uh later get in plus for the base f2 base light lead f2 lead f2 lead two Let's see if i can go through this real fast Now the reason why you're doing this is because it just makes everything organized. I do everything in the playlist view, so I like to see exactly what I'm working with and what I want to cut out, what I want to add. Um, it just makes your workflow easier. And that's pretty much that. These are all just uh, effects, um, added sounds just to make the track sound a little bit more fuller. So I don't really care about the names on those, it doesn't matter to me. Alright, yeah, so right now that's what we did in this video. All we did was name the sounds. We also named them on the, se the step sequencer as well as the playlist view. On the playlist view, that's where everything, that's how I lay out everything on the playlist view so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I cut off what I don't like um, or, you know, add drops and whatnot and add certain effects. It's easier because I could see it. And in the step sequencer here, we have the names, as I said. And we learned today that at the top, you could change the actual name of that step sequence for the whole for that whole step sequence. Um, this is why I separate each uh, uh, each portion, each sound on its own step sequence. So that way, when I go through, all I have to do is come over here in the playlist view, and I could click you know sequence one at the top or one on the keyboard or whatever and just go there it'll add it there if i went six then i just add it there the sound naturally would just it's automatically attached to that and since we named it to what sound it is now we can see exactly what is going on here all right so that ends this video uh, in the next video we're going to learn about color coding these sounds making sure that um, you know, color coding helps. It makes it not only does it makes make your project look better and more a little bit more, I guess, professional, but it makes you look like you're actually doing something and you're building something. Drum patterns, I would use yeah, like the color yellow, and for all the other sounds, I use ranges, uh, color ranges from red to orange or whatever to separate each sound. Um, so that way that I know that this row is for, you know that consistent sound all the way throughout and the same for every other sound all right so hope to see you in the next video that will be video number two you could probably click somewhere on this video an annotation on this video that will link you there and that will be color coding your sounds in fl studio 11 i hope to see you soon peace